see those big, bright, shiny red trucks just a trucking down the road. Those big, bright, shiny red trucks just a looking for another load. Well, it's a family tradition, any Rocky Mountain day. Our fathers before us showed us the way. We work for asphalt cowboys and concrete kings, but that's never been a problem, because we got diesel in our veins. We've got diesel in our veins. What's up, JFW family? Welcome back to the Channel 23 podcast. The purpose of this podcast is to reach out and touch the fleet, to engage and inform everyone with all things JFW. Good morning, man. We got Jim White, Brother Dave, and Super Dave in the house. Morning, everybody. Happy podcast day. Good morning. What's happening, everyone? We were all just talking to everybody about Jim's opening the can of (laughs) <laughs> whoop ass whoop ass <laughs> in the morning before the podcast so we thought maybe we needed a sound effect of like some coffee pouring so i just happened to oh, do play. it right quick but there's a lot jam i pick would one even, I would just <laughs> pick one and hit play that's what see, i do see if we can play it's it. gonna have yeah. to be loud crank it up let me see here I'll i could to, just turn his mic up oh man oh no there's Oh, never mind. There's there's all sorts of stuff with it, Jim. There's See? music and... See, audio engineering is not as easy as everybody exactly. thinks. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So. Well, you make it look easy, Jim. Good job. <laughs> I, make thing- it, I make it look easy, but I make it sound terrible. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, is this poor coffee sound effects, it's six minutes and 42 seconds. <laughs> that's a, so, so I don't I know. Mean, that's Someone's going to pee coffee. during that. <laughs> right? Yeah. I think I guarantee we'll, I you. Have to, I wonder who's going to be added when we're having a short right? podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who that would be. Here's a, here's a, let me just try it. Here's a 17 second one. Let me just uh, try it. See if it, that's got to work. That's good. Uh, <laughs> Sounds great. Oh. That does not sound like coffee pouring. <laughs> <boring. laughs> like Definitely right. sounds like you're at a urinal. Jim just peed his pants. <laughs> oh, sorry, everybody. Oh. On to more patriotic and yes, positive let's, things. Yes. Let's get to the pledge. <laughs> get off, Jim. I, I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag. flag. Oh, oh wait, 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 wait. Sorry. If there's anybody out there driving around listening to this podcast. Oh, good job, Jim. Please join us in the pledge. Yes, good job. All right, sorry. Absolutely. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to go out and do some trucking today. We pray for the safety of our fleet, all of their families, and all the other families and individuals we come across on the road today. We pray for patience and in making a good, safe decisions. We pray to be accident-free and that we all make it back to the comfort of our homes this evening. We pray for healing and 100% recovery for all of our family members that are ill. And no matter what, we trust you, God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 As a reminder, anything you hear on today's podcast is not the opinion of JFWs. It's just our expressed opinion. Absolutely. Episode 119. <sighs> Didn't do very well. 396 <laughs> downloads. But there wasn't a lot, of, a whole lot of work going on last week. Right. We were at 65,000, well, 65.6 thousand total downloads. But we gained some followers, so that's a win. We're at 544 followers. Very cool. Good. Yeah. Good. Hopefully this one is... <clears throat> It's going to be amazing. We're going to have 800 downloads. Absolutely. Absolutely. I already know. Need to work on the title, our our comeback episode. Comeback episode. Yeah. You don't want to miss this one. No, you don't want to miss this one. I'll put that in the title. There you go. You (laughs) don't want to miss this one. Ebbs and flows. And And hopefully when people are done listening, they're like, I'm glad I didn't miss that. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I didn't miss is that, and I know we were already talking about politics, but that Greta Thunberg, is that his name? Thunberg? The little... Climate change girl? Oh, yeah. yeah. What's yeah. her name? The one who dropped out of high school? Yeah. The climate change girl. Yeah. Well, she stepped out of a lane again, and she's attacking the music industry. And by 2030, all guitars have to be electric. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. Time for the dad joke challenge. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> well, let's see if I can pull this one off. 
Do you know what kind of bear is condescending? Yes. A panda. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Man, Good job, dude. Because I was like, can I, can I do that? Because I got that one from Rick Gray. Did you Did you have that in the text? No, I've just seen it like <laughs> oh, at I least a we, dozen times. Jim, so, it's the only reason I even remember it. I wish we had like, you on video, Dave. When you said that, that was really animated. A panda. <laughs> uh, you can't say uh, duh without like that facial expression. It's weird yeah. that Brother Dave got the condescending joke. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I have six on my list, Jim, if you want to snag another one. I, I, I have one more. It's a little long, but I thought it was, I hadn't heard any of us do this one. So here, I'll try it. So two friends are walking down the street and trying to think of something to do. One of the friends turns to the other and says, hey, let's go get a drink. There's a new place that does the best punch you'll ever drink. Mm. So they make their way to the bar, walk straight up to the bartender and ask for two glasses of his best punch. The bartender replies in a stern voice, if you want some punch, you're gonna have to get in line like everybody else. The two friends turn and look around, but there's no punch, punch line. line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good one. Uh, All right, who's gonna follow that act up? <laughs> Oh, all right. I got a couple or more. Six. <laughs> exactly. Why did the egg hide? Mm. It was Easter. It was you... a little chicken. Ah, I like that. <laughs> Why couldn't the sunflower ride its bike? Mm. It lost its pedals. Oh, man. <laughs> these are more like... Man, uh, we should be able to get these or something. Yeah, they're... They're not actually jokes. <laughs> They're riddles. All right. You, Jam, I think of you on this one, and I'll stop. Uh, I'll just call it three is good. So what's an egg's favorite vacation spot? I've heard this. Yolk, yolk something. You are close. Ah. You're, um, New York City. Oh, man. <laughs> what's wrong with you, Jam? You think our dad one? jokes Come on. for sure. Oh, Sleeping at the I happen switch to think all there. three of those were awesome. <laughs> Tell the other three, go ahead. Yeah, they were dangerous. Nah. I didn't, I didn't get the punchline. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get it? What month, has, uh, what month is the shortest of the year? Mm. Can't be February. February. That'd be, that'd be, that'd May. That's not right, Can't right. be. That's too obvious. <laughs> May. May. Yeah, Jem's right. May. It only has three letters. Yeah. Uh, I used to run a dating service for chickens. But I had to quit because I was struggling to make hens meet. Uh, okay, that was stupid. I'll go. <laughs> uh, no way. I got to finish with this one, Dave. I just got it because I gave it to you earlier this morning, right? <laughs> what does a pig put on dry skin? Oint, ointment. Yeah. You're oint, spot job, on. Jim, ointment. <laughs> yep, yep. Well, I got some winter jokes here because it is still winter. I know we're all looking towards spring, but what did the icy road say to the car? Slow down. <laughs> Almost. I'm just skidding. You want to go for a spin? <laughs> oh, That's pretty good. Yep. That is and good. Then, and then one more. One more. What do you get when you cross a vampire with a snowman? Oh, I think I've seen that one too, but I can't remember. Snow bites. Pretty yeah. good, yeah. Frost Frostbite. Uh, yes, yeah. Jim, you got it. Yeah. Man, Frostbite. I need to... Uh, Bella eats these... Uh, they're called squeezies. It's like applesauce and a... Oh, yeah, yeah. And the little green pouches, right? Yes. yes. Do you have those too? I, well, I mean, not anymore. <laughs> we, but anyway, on the bottom of them is all dad jokes. Yes. Oh, really? Yeah. I forgot oh, that, Jim. Yeah, she'll, yeah. Be, she'll be telling me dad jokes all the time. I don't know if they were the brand squeezies, but the girls, we used to, Holly used to buy them all the time, and you'd squeeze them out of the pack. Uh -huh. Anyway, we opened one at one time, and they, it was spoiled inside, Jim. Ooh. And Erica or Allie or something squeezed it, and it's black, and it oh, smelled. Man. And we like, we that like, never had another one. Never had another one. We never man. bought them for the girls, or <laughs> it was so gross, you guys. It wow. was bad. <laughs> oh man uh, uh, new employees we got Samuel Diaz does he go by Sammy I thought I heard somebody uh, say Sammy don't know well, Samuel I think because okay. I said do oh. you want to do you go by Sam or Samuel and he said Samuel 
Well, definitely not Sammy then. Not yep. yet. Yep. A couple weeks. It'll be Sammy. But <laughs> My welcome. Sam thought Ewell was his middle name until he was about like eight. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Ewell. <laughs> I can't know. <laughs> Those stories about Sam kill me. I can't know. <laughs> That's funny. Well, welcome to the fleet, Samuel. Yep, absolutely. Welcome, welcome and that's uh, Fabian's buddy. Is that right? Uh, they worked together for a couple of years over at Chavez. Nice. And mm. um, yeah, Fabian's already sweet. Re- also, for- his <laughs> oh gosh, I'm probably going to screw this up, but his uncle or brother or something like that went to middle school with Pedro. Gotcha. Cousin, which is maybe. Fabian's I'm not sure. Connections. Which yeah. is Fabian's cousin. Which is Fabian's right. cousin. Yes. All right. So basically Samuel's family. Yeah. Got he's, it. He's in the insurance business. Samuel. Under right. Samuel. Pedro's house. What did I, say? I thought you said <laughs> Sam, but I don't know. A little professional connection there. Uh, moving on to anniversaries. Kurt Spencer, three years tomorrow. Ah, right. Congratulations, Kurt. Yeah, yep. Right on, Kurt. And Leo Montez, four years on Saturday. Uh, that's awesome. Oh, very Leo cool. Four yeah. years. Yeah, good stuff. Yep. Uh, that flies pa- when you're having fun, guys. Oh, yeah. yeah. Two good guys. Potter had a birthday this past Sunday. Happy birthday, yeah, Potter. Happy birthday, Potter. Speaking of Fabian Sotelo, him and Gilly have birthdays this Saturday. Happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday, guys. I was impressed good. when you see twins. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, family birthday celebrations. Somehow, I screw these up every week, and I always got to wish people belated happy birthdays. So, Letty Tharp which is Zach's wife, and then Lauren Nahara, which is Paco's wife, they had birthdays last Friday. Anytime I see the name happy. Letty, when you hear Letty, what do you think of? Uh, uh, Fast Zach. and Furious. Yes. Yeah. Zach's wife. Well, never, <laughs> well, maybe now we'll think of that. But it's, a, it's a different name. Did you, yeah, did you never watch Fast and the Furious, Super Dave? No, not wow. one of them. No wonder you hate me. Yeah, there's like 10 of them, right? Uh, there is now, yeah, there's quite a few for sure. And then, Probably be uh, 10 more. Yep. Samantha uh, Trehone, she had a birthday Monday. And then, uh, and that is, I'm sorry, Chris Beam's significant other. Mm-hmm. Then Drea Molina, which is Potter's significant other. Rob Stutz, which is Ann's husband. Emerson McKee, which is Jonathan's, uh, I believe, son. And then Liam Sharp, Zach's son. They all have birthdays today. Wow. Happy oh, birthday, yeah, happy everybody. Happy birthday, but Yeah. So hopefully I didn't miss any and never fails. Somebody will come up to the yard and point at me real mean and be like, you missed my kid's birthday. Like, oh, man, sorry. We could just start making up names and make see if we could. Oh, Bob had a birthday last week. Congratulations, oh, yeah. Sue. Congratulations. It would, it would be hard to come up with a name like Letty had a birthday right, last week. Right, right, yep. So, all right, shout outs. We have Ryan Emerling wants to give a shout out to Todd Dahl. He has been having trouble with his low gauges on his trailer. He got loaded heavy on his trailer axles, but was sure to shovel and fix his load before he went to the port, getting the job done the right way. That's how it works, man. Get that's up and that, shovel. That's how it works. Super that Dave, awesome. how much does one shovel full of three-quarter wash rock weigh? 20 pounds if you fill it up. Yep. Yep. So if you got to move a 1,000 pounds... Get to shoveling. Yep. Yeah. How does that go, it, Dave? It's pretty 20, 40, 60, 81. 20, yeah. 40, 60, 82. Two. That's right. <laughs> Shit, where was that? Works every right. time. The only thing is when two guys are shuffling, it gets a little confusing. Right? <laughs> what are you at? Six. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fast that way, isn't it, Super Dave? I it mean, is. how many years have we you know, done it's, that? It's fast to shovel a thousand pounds. It, it, it really? doesn't take, <laughs> no. but, you know, five minutes, really. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You just definitely have to throw it far enough forward. That's, Otherwise, you got to do it twice. <laughs> that's the yeah. only thing, yeah. <laughs> or on your neighbor. <laughs> or just over the side of the road. No, I'm just kidding. Never mind. <laughs> In traffic. Right. Just throw it off the side of the scale at yard 23. There you go. Uh, Casey wants to give a shout-out to Cowboy Troy for helping Quincy dial in his CB radio while at Morton. Nice. Thanks, yeah, Cowboy. You know, yeah. if, you don't, if you don't know how to dial one of those CBs, then it's, you're kind of lost. you got to know right. what buttons do what and... If you don't know, you don't know. Yeah, yes. you don't know. Now, but, it's not like you get that in high school. Hey, how do you tune a CB? Yeah, but it is all something you should know. <laughs> you have to be articulate to be able to articulate. Wow. Man. Well, Wait. we have started going over that in training. Yep. Yeah. So they get a little bit of a crash course. <clears throat> really? I, oh, I don't... sorry, Dave. I just squelched you out. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <understand. laughs> 
I don't understand why you don't do the CB training because you are like the CB. Like it should be his middle guru. initials, shouldn't yeah, it? It I, should be like Dave CB Weldon. I have the guys I, for twenty minutes and then they go away for the next three days. Well, <laughs> don't how would see you, him. How would you like to have forty minutes? <laughs> Some days I do. <laughs> there you go. You used to have quite a bit, but yeah, I was thinking about making a wood sign that says "Super Dave CB Shopping" hanging it above your door. <laughs> <laughs> His retirement plaque, is that how... Super Dave taught me everything I know about CB radios. That's when we had... uh, What was that guy's name that did our radios? Redbone. Redbone. I had a Redbone radio. Yep. All right, let's see. Fabian Sotelo. Oh, I want to give Fabian a shout out. We were doing some audits on some new guys the other day, meaning, you know, we pull up random videos and let's just see, make sure this guy's getting on a scale right, make sure he's not bombing down a hill, make sure he's not doing anything super dangerous. Man, Fabian, great speed, great great distance, great space, great dumping procedure. He did everything just like. That is awesome. It's nice to see that and just be like, wow, somebody's doing it exactly the way that Good we job, want to Good job, Fabian. Yep. And then uh, Kendrick, he wants to give a shout out to uh, Zach Tharp. He had to leave in a hurry the other day to get somewhere before it closed, but then he came back to Yard 23 to do his post trip. He's also rocking a 100 on his Samsara score, and he's always asking questions to become better. Man. Yeah. That's outstanding. <laughs> yeah, Zach's actually got quite a bit of shout-outs today. He is, uh, making, he's making a little bit of uh, noise by being a silent warrior. Right. What's that quote I used to say? Uh, let your mm-hmm. actions speak louder than words or let something. Your, let your noise be by your work. Or I have to look that one up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that was a good one. That was a good one. quote, <clears throat> yep. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. Amber, she wants to give a shout out to Kathy Rutherford for stepping up and being involved. Uh, you guys may be getting calls from Kathy instead of Amber, so just be aware of who she is. If you want to meet her, you are more than welcome to walk up the stairs and say hi. She's in the middle office with Joanne and Amber. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I've seen somebody come by our office and was looking for Kathy, and I'm like, oh, Kathy's already doing some. You know, swag packs or something like that. Or they had a bone to pick with her. Well, it was looking for Coors tickets. Oh, gotcha. So, yep, she's, was it she's, Vince? She's, uh, I don't remember who it was. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it wasn't somebody from the shop. How's that? Gotcha. <laughs> uh, Jay wants to give a shout out. JR wants to give a shout out to Matt Montano, 0065. Matt requested a sit down to review his written test missed answers which we did last night, and we're able to go in more depth on some of those topics. I mean, that's stand-up. That's learning for excellence. Right. You know, that's, that's man, I got that wrong. I want to know the right answer. Mm-hmm. So, good job. Yeah, and that's then, engaged. Yep. He's, he's new to end dumping, but uh, his will is pretty strong. He yep. really, really wants to learn and, and excel. His dad jokes are terrible. They're worse than ours. <laughs> they are the absolute worst, but... Yeah. I, I, so he's going to be on the podcast next week. I mean, I thought Super Dave was going to bust out some Yoda stuff on that. His will is strong. Like <laughs> strong. The his strong is will in this is, I am. <laughs> Zach Tharp. Uh, JR also wants to give a shout out to Zach Tharp in 0075. Extremely receptive to coaching and goes out of his way to show appreciation by messaging you back a thank you or feedback on the good things we're trying to do here at JFW to be better. So, yeah, more Zach. And speaking of Zach Tharp, he actually shot me a text message. Hey, Jam, I connected with Amber today and thanked her for letting me know about the birthday gift card JFW got for me. I sent a thank you card last week to the main office. Did anybody see that? I did. Oh, I never yeah. saw it. Yeah. That's cool. I, I put it downstairs, I thought. Maybe maybe it's still on my desk, Jam, but okay. I did see yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just glad we got it. Yeah, no, it was it's it's awesome. 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 Those are always so heartfelt, yeah. Yep. Uh, He goes on to say, Our family really appreciates the generous, nice gift from my son's first birthday. He loves all the cars to play with, all the new cars to play with. He plays with them at least once a day, if not more. I'm very grateful to be part of the JFW family with the high standards of trucking and safety, valuing hard work and doing the job right, and the continuous learning to make us better drivers and to be proud of our work, create value for the company. I'm so glad I found JFW and to be given the opportunity to be a part of the family. It's like no other job I've had. I've learned a lot in the short time I've been here and strive to get better each day, live our values, and think highly of our culture. 
Awesome. Well, well said. Huh? Yeah, well put. I think Zach needs to come on the podcast. That's the force is strong with this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys got any shout outs? Yeah, I have one I wanted to, to bring up um, for Chris Moore. <clears throat> um, he went to uh, Knights to uh, replace Charlie on Coors there. And I can't really give him a pat on the back <laughs> for, the, for the driving side because he's he struggled but our culture side and owning things and trying to be better and and the things we've worked with him on i i think he's i think he'll he'll he'll, he'll be just fine yeah he'll he'll get through it he'll you know? persevere and I, yeah and i want to i want to give him a pat on the back for that and i i think that's important when you demonstrate that and it doesn't it doesn't matter who you are when you demonstrate that in life i think you're a you're a hero, and so I appreciate it, Chris Moore, for sticking in there and oh, and and that's awesome, do, Jim. Doing what he can. I saw yeah. your email response to him the other day, and I, I really liked it. I loved your response, and I thought it was heartfelt and you know a nice boost for him. And I feel like he is settling down. You know what I mean? Like he got it all out of the way. <laughs> you know what I mean? And he did. Let's hope so. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> he came in the other day, and he's like, he walked in the office, and he's like. Man, I just don't know what to expect walking in here today. I'm like, well, we're all too tired. So. <laughs> have, was, a, have a safe night. <laughs> I was impressed. They preloaded, or they did six loads last night. Yeah. But delivered five. Yeah. That's the first time yeah. in. Mm. Yeah. Man, I don't want to spit out years, but it feels like a so, really, really long time. I feel like Chris Moore is a motivated person, and I feel like he will be an asset to Chorus because yes. he wants to get the job done. Yeah, you know, he, yeah, and, we, and I think he helps Jason incredibly. Yeah, you know what I mean. Right. Not that he motivates Jason because Jason's a rock star right. doing that. Yeah. I mean, the yeah. dude's just flawless. Yeah, he, but he, he's brought a team environment. Yes, right? yes. I think he allowed Jason to deliver three last night. Right. Where in the past, I don't think that was possible. Right. Yeah. So there was. Yeah. A, yeah. Yeah. And Jason, man, he he does make it look easy. Oh, he does. What's so impressive to me about Jason, other than he doesn't listen to the podcast, but he knows those what? Bruce schedules. Like he he just knows, like okay, this happens, and you got this much time. That'll happen. You got this much time. This line opens up. Wow. You don't have any. Like he, yeah, he wow. knows it better than the course people. Like, That's outstanding. I didn't got, know that. Jim. Oh yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, and I have it in my notes a little bit later, but <clears throat> since we talk about it, Coors went to five lines. Right. First time in five years? They're going to. Going to. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they're there yet. Ah, uh, geez. It I, was going to be a couple-week transition. I thought it started. But e either way, they're, yeah. they're going to go to five lines eventually, or they started, or were close, whatever. Right. And uh, that'll you know that'll be awesome. You know, yep. They haven't done that in a long time. Right. So that, go ahead, rain, rain on my that, parade, Dave. That new, whether it, you know starts yesterday or two days, the it's new, more work. The new facility they're building up there is incredible, though. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. OMG! It is it is mind, but I, I can't even imagine what that costs. Huh. It's not going to be as good as the new JFW facility, though. <laughs> so, whatever. I that I have a friend that works up there, and when I was talking to him about it, and one of their their biggest number one concern. Because they're going from, I'll probably screw this up, right? But either copper kettles or glass kettles. They're copper kettles, I think, right now. I think they are copper. They are kettles. copper. Right? Yeah, right? they're definitely copper. But they're going to stainless. Mm. And they're the worried. Flavor. Of, exactly. Mm. And, you know, I asked him, I'm like, so what if you brew X amount of brews and you can't get the taste the same? And and he's like, we have to. And I, I, I guess my thought on that <laughs> Why is, are they changing though? Well, they're going to save like a million gallons of water a year. They can produce like double the production. I think they I mean, was everything. more asking like copper to stainless. Yeah. Oh, I know. oh I, why, I why switch? I, I wonder. You. Yeah, if they've got this <clears throat> recipe that works, it's a hundred. Something yeah. years old, why are they changing? Yeah, it? you wouldn't think, because I know their processes like, are saving all this water, but you yeah. wouldn't think copper and stainless. Yeah, classic Coca-Cola, new Coca-Cola, it was a Probably bomb. cleanliness or so, yeah, something. I mean, stainless There's a reason is like for the stainless. The food product, yeah, right, but metal. The, the, right, that, that right. culture that gets built up on the inside of that <laughs> copper, it has that flavor But I guess taste. my point was, if the flavor's not the same because of the you know copper to stainless, 
it's not like a recipe where you go, oh, I need just a little more salt or I need a little more oregano. Yeah, or, yeah. You know what I mean? What do you? How do you change the? You recipe? don't call Coors up and go, man, that was a really good batch. This, right. This, you know, <laughs> right. Like, like telling Holly, I don't know what you did to the potato soup. It's really good tonight. <laughs> yeah, and I tried to ask him that, and he's like, I don't know. <laughs> this one, this just needs a little more hydrochloric acid. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Well, we can change that. Blah 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 blah. Right. And then he just keeps talking about how much stainless pipe is up there. He goes, he thinks there's enough pipe to go around the world. Wow, uh, that's crazy. So I got to get up there and check it out. It's, yeah. it's got to do another sure tour. Sure sounds impressive, yeah. Any other shout-outs, guys? No more shout-outs? Okay. Uh, let's talk about upcoming work. I did see we had 48 loads coming out of Fair Play today. That was encouraging. That was encouraging. What else we got going on, Jim? Man, you threw it right on me. Uh, was it was yeah, it was it, my, was it my note <laughs> right on yeah. your back? <laughs> Wasn't it his note? No. <laughs> John, let's talk about the upcoming work. Okay, I'll let it. <laughs> it feels like I just have to sit here and not say anything the way the work's been. But yeah, you guys, we've uh, um, I don't I don't know quite how to put it, but I guess there's been a lot of changes up at Fry's also. You know, with Martin Marietta. Um, taking over yeah. and we did meet with Martin Marietta and I'm just going to joke around when we got done with the meeting their kind of culture they joke with it they call Martin Marietta Uncle Marty <laughs> and you know this is the way Uncle Marty will want it done or this is what Uncle Marty's doing this week that kind wow. of stuff so um, we did meet with them we met with dispatch just to make sure we're prepared to haul out of fries if we need to so we're looking at partnering with them and doing some hauling for them I know next week is it Thursday? Next, next Thursday, Thursday and next fr- Friday, right? They're going to come here to our yard at f- either five five thirty. Five thirty. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So we'll do half the fleet and people on Thursday, yep. and get them M Shaw trained for every location they have. Mm. So we won't uh-huh. when we roll in in the truck. You know, if if we haul out of you know pit six or. Wallstrom Quarry. Yep. I need, I, I'm the one that keeps I'm saying, saying we need I'm to change that. I'm saying fries, but, but yeah, yeah you're Wallstrom right. Wallstrom Quarry. Yep. We won't need to have anything done. We're already taken care of to get in and out of there. Which, I mean, obviously the majority of our people have already taken care of that one, but they'll be good everywhere. Yeah, yeah. If, I mean, if there's talking, a Martin Marietta Quarry, we'll have yeah, the M shot yeah. training for the rest of the year to get through it. Nice. And we talk so, to them. And like that's Red Canyon, and what's the one in Wyoming we haul out of? Grant, used to be Grand, Grand, Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon. Yeah. But yeah, they also that. own. Our own Guernsey, and then there's another one right near Guernsey. And yep. Yeah, so Martin Marietta. Stuff is, when we're doing the golf course sand up mm, there, yeah. Hopefully, we can get some halls coming back off of, and just all sorts of stuff on that forefront. So it yep. just opens up some more doors and and creates a a little better ecosystem for us work wise. Yeah, yeah, and it's important to be here next Thursday and Friday and grab that training because it'll save you a lot. Absolutely. And like we, you know, we need to be prepared when we met with them. Um, just like we tell everybody, we're we're prepared. We do it the right way. You know that was part of the you know wearing the PPE outside the Wallstrom Quarry there. Right, is to be prepared for that. And then uh, also this week we met with uh, Raptor Materials and uh, had a really good conversation with them. Hope to be doing some trucking for them if we can. Um, they're uh, uh, you know another corporation, For, Raptor Materials, but formerly Vara. Former, that's what I was going to say. They're they're a Vara company that right. Raptor bought. Right. So we we're already hauling out of their pits. You know, we uh, us three have a long history hauling out of the Vara pits, and you know, right. good good place to haul out of. So yeah, they, we we brought up more of their employees than some of them even knew. <laughs> yep, yep. Through the through the years. So yeah, it's just a a lot. You know, I I know I kind of joked around there with you, Jam, like what work but we have a lot in the frying pan here Absolutely. and uh, we've we've made a lot of connections including the cooler side brandon you talk about the 48 loads jam so brandon went back to uh, fair play to plant 13 to union i think they were using up a little more material at union and then uh, also we talked to the asphalt side and garrett and theron were doing six loads a day here um, out of there to to one of the asphalt plants. I don't. Mm-hmm. I didn't hear which one, but um, we'll take that week by week. So it's it, it's changing, you guys. And uh, you know, on our part, maybe we should have been a little more reactive. But you know, the the I guess the the work's been just a little weird. A little. Uh, it's a weird year. It truly feels like an election year. And yeah, I'm not talking for, politics, for change. but yeah. Our Jim and I's entire lives in this industry, election years were weird, man. Huh. Nobody wants to commit until they know what president's in. And it, you would think 
<clears throat> that's typically the following year. Right. Right. This is how it used to feel every election year, though, which is weird. I mean, we, you know, we've been blessed and we haven't been touched by that for the last three, maybe four elections. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, years? yeah. Wow. Yeah, really. I mean, we just haven't been. I mean, I think the one uh, we, we yeah. strolled Good. through both Obamas. I, we strolled through. I was going to Trump. We strolled Obama. through. Yeah, because you know, smoking Joe and yeah, it seemed to Joe, be whichever you prefer. Yeah, it seemed to be a big worry for Obama. And yes, I, and it, uh, that first year, Dave, remember, and that was. But he signed in a ton of construction. Yep. Right. Yep. And we went to. Yeah. Went to I, work. Believe it or not, Biden sent out a lot of construction. But Polis here stole yep. it. Yeah, we killed yeah. it. Polis stole over five hundred billion in roads and bridges and all of that, and put it to green. Yeah, he took it for solar and wind and all of that, and it was it was plain out theft. And the way the bill was written, everybody in the legislators and all the associations, meaning the Colorado constructors, CMCA, all of those groups were like, "This is good. This is good. This is good." And you know that that friend of mine that that. Ray Scott, the former senator from Grand Junction, while he was in office, because that happened in 2019, he's like, no, it's not. This is bad. This is bad. And he kept telling everyone and that no one would believe him. And now here we are. And the way Polis actually set it up, you guys, and tell me how this can work. The asphalt budget for CDOT gets less and less and less every year. Wow. How can Colorado grow? And f our roads are the you know some the of the worst. worst in the nation. And he's going to take asphalt from the budget every year? Yep. It's it's shocked. He needs to go. Oh, man. Yep. Can't wait for that man to turn out in a couple yep. of years. Yep. yep. Okay. Well, speaking of new work and work in general, I want to talk about the four rights when it comes to loads. I love those. <clears throat> so when we're hauling materials somewhere, we got to have four rights, okay? That's going to be the right customer, the right material, the right place and the right time. Obviously, the customer is going to be the customer. The material is important. You know, if they, you know, just because you usually haul rock out of somewhere, they may be getting sand. So you got to check your tickets. The right place will be the right place in the plant, right? Sometimes we dump it in the wrong place. And the right time, meaning you got to do your dispatch in the order that you receive it. Yeah. Well, and you better check your dispatch too. Better check your dispatch. We're actually going to bring that up here in a little bit as you well. You know what they say? Two wrongs don't make a right. Four rights don't make a wrong. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you made four rights, right, right, you'd be going in the same direction. There you go. No, you'd be going, but never mind. I'm confused. <laughs> so you guys want to add anything to that just because we have had a little trouble this past week? I, I think for myself, it, it'd be the same thing. Of jumping down a little bit here, Jam, for ramping up That's and shaking it. off the dust. I right. think it's the same. Right, getting back in the groove, getting yeah. back on the saddle, whatever, yeah. however you want to put it. Jim. Yeah, yeah, because, I, I mean, we've we've hauled wrong loads. We've dumped in the wrong bins. We've hauled out of the wrong pits. Drove we've, into things. Yeah, we've, yeah. We, we've done all sorts of stuff. And I think, you know, shaking off the dust is a good is a good wor way to put that. But I, I wrote some notes, and I want to throw it out here to everybody um, how do you like my pages? I got wow. enough. I got enough notes here. Get File cabinet going. <laughs> I thought I was about to hear the drawer open. Or You're going to be late to your meeting, brother Dave. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think you know. As I kind of looked at that this morning, that you know, the shop it hasn't slowed up. Still fixing trucks. Building you know, trucks. we get, building trucks. We've done all that. You know, what's not getting done to the day because we're building some trucks. You know, it's been throwing on the night guy. Wash bay. They're still washing trucks, probably more than ever, and they're dirtier than ever with the time of year it is. You know, the office here and things like that, you know, we've been just as busy. You know, we added Kathy and the procedures, and then you got the end of stuff for Joanne and the different uh, insurances and things like that. But uh, I got to throw it out here, um, along with the drivers, you know, we're talking about, you know, knocking the dust off and stuff. I have to call out the safety team and uh, and the leadership team here because um, they have to do the same thing. You know, we've I've heard the wrong loads. You know, we're hauling out a fair play. We're dumping at a new spot today for uh, uh, rubble and stuff like that. I haven't heard any announcements from our safety team on the radio. I haven't heard any conversations in the afternoon. You know, we, we all have to get back in the game. 
and I think it's been slow for the for the safety team. And you, everybody has gotten out of sync that that's that's hooked to the loads, you know, hooked to our our daily activity. And uh, it, it's time we shift gears and get back in the game. Um, you know, Jam, I love you've told the story over and over, and I, I bring it up. You know, you tell the story about you were working for your brother and. And, uh, you know, you told your brother, I, I'm doing the best I can, right? Yeah. And Or everything you can, right? I'm trying my hardest. I'm trying my hardest. <laughs> I'm trying my hardest, right? right? But doing the best you can, yeah. right? And your brother said, if, 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 if that's it, that, if, we got a problem. If that's your best, this job ain't for you. Right? Yep. Right? And I guess that's what I want to challenge the safety team. I want to challenge the leadership team, it, you know, if that's the best, this isn't the job for you. And I think we got to take our time and get rid of our distractions. We have a lot of other distractions that we're concentrating on, whether it's personal or not. And this is when it starts to count, when we start to get busy again and ramp up. And this is where mistakes can happen, just, just like hauling the wrong load or dumping in the wrong bin. That's not a big mistake, but what does that lead to? You know, and, and what does that cost in the long run? And then, you know, my big thing is I, as we went through this last week and we called several times, Brandon was awesome. They worked with us. But what do we look like to Brandon, you know, to our customers? And we're talking about working for Martin Marietta. We're talking about working for Raptor, you know, still taking care of Brandon and stuff like that. We can't, we can't show up at do a load for Raptor and, you know, we hauled squeegee and we loaded sand. You know, and that, and, and that's the driver's side. But the safety team part can be making announcements in the morning. Hey, everybody, we had a bunch of loads that we, you know, we screwed up on yesterday. Let's do this. You know, hey, all the rock trailers, we're hauling to a different, uh, different location, dump site. Be careful. Make sure it's level. Find out where you're dumping. One of the safety guys is going to be going by and checking on it this morning. There's a, there's a lot we can do. And, and so, um, I'm challenging the safety team. Let's, Let's step it up, guys. Um, that's you know we we pick on the drivers all the time. It sounds like so. <laughs> I, I'm picking on the safety guys. Challenge accepted. Yep. All right. Yep. I want to touch on that too. Don't ever be too sure. You know, get take yourself off of remote control because we tend to go on remote control at this time of year because it's slow and things are you know essentially easy, but. Don't ever assume or just not think. Stop and think. Double check. If you have even 1% of question, ask somebody. Ask that question to another driver, to dispatch, to one of the safety team. You know, just don't assume, I guess. Just uh, pick it up and, and say, wow, you know, let me check. That kind of just falls in line with the shake the rust and dust off, Dave, to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're, we're, we're coming out of January. It was our worst January in 10 years, Jim. Yeah. At least. Yeah. I mean, we didn't see that coming. Right. It was rough. Yeah. You know, and all the drivers know it. Maybe not everyone else that's working here, but the drivers felt it. And I know JFW felt it. Oh, yeah. It was it was a rough January. And honestly, the first couple of weeks of February yeah, haven't been any better. Right. Yeah. So we're 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 out. We're working on getting that taken care of. So But we can't we can't do that by ourselves. Right. You know, we gotta have we gotta have teammates. Right. You know, and that's what we we preach all all the time. We know? have and, to capitalize on perfection because of the cost of the incidents or accidents. Yep. We can't afford it. Nope. So nope. just can't. Just Everybody's can't got to done. bring the A game. Absolutely. Well, speaking of the A game, we are trying to do some safety things around here. We are in our first week of our 30 day trial of Infinity training. And uh, we sent out 124 assignments, meaning one assignment to 124 people. Some of it was a safety team. So the, the percentages are about the same. But out of the 124, we had 72 completions, which is 58%. Uh, this morning, we talked about taking the leadership team out. You know, that only dropped at 1%. So 57% participation. We got to do better than that, right? We're obviously looking for 100% participation. Uh, we're talking about ways to get that. 
But really, we don't want to make it where we got to chase you down or we got to put a policy in place to get you to do this. We want you to do it because we want you to be better yourself. Right. That makes sense. So Yeah, I, 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 to help you out, Jim, or I think this helps, yeah. I, I pulled a quote on that. You know, good teammates push each other to be great. Greatness isn't a solo position. It's a result of pushing past limits together. Be the reason your teammate refuses to settle for anything less than their best. Mm. And that's what we're asking with this. We're, we're trying to send something out, just another piece to make us great, make you great. This is, this is if you're going to be a truck driver, this is a skill you can take any place. <laughs> Not only that, you can teach your kids, you can teach your significant other, you can talk about it. This is, this, this is just great. And, and the videos, you know, the first one I did, um, it took me three times to pass it. Mm. But I also don't agree with one of the questions. <laughs> um, and but that that's that spurs conversation. Sure. And and you know we talked this which morning, which is conversation about safety. Absolutely. Right. right? Absolutely. That's the cool it, part. It, it's, it's conversation yeah. about safety. Yep. And it's it's taken that next step. Well, we're we, you know when we met, we talked about it on the a couple of podcasts ago. You know, some of the stuff that you run into, and I know we gave the stats of the, the first year driver, what accidents they have, you know, five to 10, there's this position. Then you get a driver that's been driving longer than that, and he becomes complacent, or, or she or he becomes complacent, but that's because it, it's become natural, it's become redundant, and you just, you do, you know, you go through the light and you don't remember going through the light, but you're so trained that it's green, it's red, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. And that's what some of these videos help. I mean, the first one was, you know, did I know everything? You know, did I argue with what the one the one was? Um, but yeah, and and I, I I guess I want that. You know, when we talked this morning, guys, honestly, I'll mention this that because we've been so slow, not all the trucks are working. We rolled these videos out. Is everybody watching them because they weren't here working? Right. You know, and, and I did say, hey, if I was if I wasn't working, would I be concentrating on work? Would I would I bother filling this out or taking this test if, for example, I'm not being paid? Right. Or would you just do it at the pit when when you got to work? Right. Right. I, I get. I think exactly. It's like the podcast when when we're slow, our listens are down. Yes. Yes. Because you're you're you know you're doing other things, but you're not in the work mode. But that's what we're talking about is getting back in the work mode and 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 being safe and having time off you might be rusty and that's what that's exactly what we're talking about is is you know hitting you in the head a little bit <laughs> and going hey come on we got we're 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 back in gear here yeah i mean i like to throw a football analogy out there because i know you guys like man oh, yeah. i've yeah. just been waiting for jim to stop talking you do it go go because i have if, one too see you, if we're running the same yeah, play here yeah so what if you were on a football team and the coach sent out a video like hey Everybody needs to watch this video for us to win. And then 57% of the people did. Right. You're not going to go out and win that game. Right. So. Very similar, Jam. I, I was, my version was <laughs> your top rated quarterbacks, right? <clears throat> They're going to watch game film. Right. This is just game film on that yeah. other team. If you're going to beat them and be successful, you need right. to watch that game film. Yeah. This is game film, man. If you're not watching it, you're not going to be successful. No. Nope. Right. You're, and you're not, yeah, there's a lot to that. I'll just stop at that. Okay. I like yeah, that. John Jordan had a good point. He uh, was, they they used Infinity at his old work. So he's familiar with this whole program and watching yeah. the videos. Uh -huh. And uh, he said, you know, some of the stuff you already know. And he goes, but there's a lot that you don't know, and it opens your eyes. Mm -hmm. And it, it brings new information in for you to, to learn. Sure. Yeah. So don't got, you think some of the stuff that you do know, it's just a good reminder? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's someone, you know, it's like that analogy that I've brought up two or three weeks now in a row from that meeting with our insurance. You know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. But but if you hold its head under long enough, it's going to take some in. <laughs> yep. You know, what I mean? and that's, this is what we're doing, right? It's, I don't want to say it's a captive audience because clearly it's not. But if, if hopefully we keep talking about it and hopefully we keep preaching about it and hopefully we keep doing it and hopefully we keep presenting it, uh -huh. if you learned something, you're yeah. ahead. Man, you're, you, you, you gained something for free. Yeah. We helped you be better. Yep. Yeah, uh, John Jordan, that was good feedback from him. And then 
Uh, also, Steve Barnes, he wants extra videos, which I thought was really cool. Like he's like, so do we have to like wait for videos, or <laughs> can I just do videos? I'm like, well, we have to assign them to you, but we certainly can yeah. send you more than what the one a week we yeah. are right now, or the one a month we may in the future, or every other week, whatever it is. But shout out to Steve Barnes for yeah. just wanting even I, more. I just love the fact we can make our own. Yeah. And put a test with it. I mean, I, I really like that. Well, if we can't JFW it, we don't want it. So <laughs> that's, that's what that is. Right. Uh, <clears throat> Casey went on to say, uh, this can only make us better as a team. We need mm-hmm. full participation, though. Please sign in and do the training. And then I want to know what training topics would you like to see? So if you're watching these videos and you're like, ah, oh, you know, I think we should do a video on whatever, let us know. Jam, can I touch on also, because I know a lot of times, sometimes just signing into something is difficult. Yeah, I want to do mm. And I, I, you guys correct me if I'm wrong. It is just the first letter of your first name and then your last name, correct? Unless your, you are one of those individuals that have a hyphenated last name. Oh. So that'll be your first initial, your last name, your first last name, space, your second last oh, name. Oh, that's complicated. Yeah. I mean, we could probably wow. get that changed, but... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who was it? Uh, Gerardo Sanchez. Okay. Came, and he's like, hey, I'm trying to sign in. Gotcha. So I looked him up. I'm like, ah, well, here's the deal. Uh, ah, yeah. gosh. We should... It would be so nice to unify that. Yeah. That way, if anyone asks, it's your first letter and your last name. Yeah, we'll get that changed. doesn't need to be capitals, or it could be capitals, or it could... It, I mean, the username, the username didn't username seem to matter. matter, and then the password is just JFW Corp. Yep. Or was it... Right? JFW, Corp. JFW Corp. Period. That's yeah. not no period. Yeah. JFW <laughs> Corp. Nothing more. Right. <laughs> Exclamation point. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I wanted to I wanted to mention mention too, not an app. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't. I, you don't have to download I, anything. You nope. get the text. You hit that deal and yeah, sign in. I yep. didn't. I didn't do any app yeah. or anything like that. We I did to, the app. You know, you have a choice. You could either have the app or not have sure. the app. Yeah, but you don't have to, right? But you don't have to. Absolutely yeah. not. Yeah. You yeah. get the assignment. You click on the link. It'll take you there. You don't need to have the app. So, yeah. 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 So far, I mean, I'm I'm pretty impressed with the platform. We'll see if we can make it work for us and if it's worth us investing into at the end of the 30 days. Right. But, you know, if you all are invested in it, like this is something that we want to buy to make the fleet better. But if we're not getting participation and it's not working, we may not do it. Or the other thing we're talking about is we get it, and then in order for you to receive your quarterly safety bonus check, you'll have to have all your training videos done. So, I mean, we don't want it to come down to that, but if we're not getting participation and we feel like this is something we need to have, it's it's going to be like that. I just find it hard to believe that someone wouldn't do it. That That's right. the part that kind of blows me away. You know right. what I mean? That. You wouldn't just want to be better. I don't want to be better. <laughs> yeah, that's the that that's the culture though. That's what we continue to create though, Dave. But just like you guys are talking with the with these videos and stuff, we're not getting everybody to listen to the podcast. Right. right. You know, right. and there there's a ton of stuff in the podcast, whether it's you know, you don't like our political so- side or the you know, the intro song or whatever, but you can skip, you can fast forward it. My my uh, son in law, I mean, he listens to it sped up. Oh, nice! Just, just to get through it, it's just it's just a little faster, but yeah. But he made it work for him. It's like one and a half times. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. Jam. And nice. I guess when you when you, you know you, the, it's the simplest question. Both of you just said, why would you not want to be better? You know, if this podcast makes you better, why would you not want to listen to it? I don't have time. Yeah, yeah but what? But the thing is, <laughs> what do you do? What, what do you have time for, Jam? Driving TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get in my three hours of TikTok viewing right. today. Uh, yeah. Right now, I'm at two and a half are hours. You? Yeah, I'm so TikTok. I, I get. I, I got to ramp it up. No. I, <laughs> I deleted my YouTube this morning. <laughs> did, did you? YouTube. I did. Wow. Took YouTube off my phone. Mm, I got to have it. YouTube. I've. I, I got a problem with it. Wow. Yeah, I looked at it this morning, and I was starting to look at it, and I'm like, "This is stupid." Deleted it off my phone. I got to make some habit changes. Well, I guess it depends what you're watching on YouTube. <laughs> So yeah, you just watch TikTok. <laughs> I, I've never had TikTok. Yeah. By the end of the day, you will. <laughs> yep. Gave up YouTube, just staying with TikTok. <laughs> I quit vaping, started smoking. <laughs> oh man, I'm going from menthol long to just Marlboro. Right, uh, right. 
It's Marlboro Reds, baby. <laughs> Here's a safety topic for you. Uh, Ken Kendrick noticed that drivers are still not stopping before getting on the scale and still talking on your CB radio when driving on. This may seem like no big deal. Like, I don't really need to stop before I get on the scale. I'm going slow enough or... I'm coordinated enough to speak on the CB radio as I'm driving on. And I've done both of those things. But if you really want to prevent yourself from having an accident on the scale, please just stop before you get on. That little stop movement will just slow down your momentum. And also, if you do have an accident, it's not going to be as bad as you roll as if you roll on doing five miles an hour. Yeah. I want to repeat, Jim, that not only stop, but Shift into first gear. Downshift to first. Pull yeah. pull on that scale gear. in first gear and not third. Uh, idle on. Yeah, idle on down to first. Absolutely. Yeah. And to, I mean, it sounds stupid, but I almost say two hands on the wheel because we've had so many people. You know, right. that's the reason we promote not talking on the CB when you pull on the scale is that that movement to lean forward while your left hand has a hold of the wheel, that movement to lean forward, you pull that wheel back. Yep. towards your belly mm-hmm. and you drift to the left and yep. hit the left side of the scale. I mean, 99% of our damage is on the left side. It's happened, but as far as I can remember, only two or three times on the right side. Right. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's the purpose. You need to be focused. It's, you know, that should, that should be one of our next videos. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's don't know a- how to portray that. I mean, it's going to take some, JR is all over it. I know he is yeah. because he's talking. I've made comments like, how do you do that? You're almost going to need a split screen. He's like, oh, yeah. He said, we're going to use some editing. <laughs> the, the thing is, to make the, the video really good, you need to crash the truck. We have a few here we can use. <laughs> you know, Because yeah. there's one we're still waiting on parts, are, man. Are, are oh, my can, gosh. I saw it last it. week, and I'm like, I was so embarrassed. It, it clicked for me, though, Jam, and I, I want to back up because we've talked about this and different things, is that where you said that, you know, Probably most everybody is capable of doing that, mm-hmm. you know, talking on the radio, pulling on without stopping, and all that kind of stuff. But with our statistics, we can prove to you it's not. Right? Ah, good point, right? Jim. Yeah. We can prove to you it's not. But the thing is, you might be the guy that really, or person, I, I don't want to leave the, the, the women out to drive in for us, but you might be the person that can actually do it every time without crashing but we've proved to you that we do crash right so if you if you are that guy that or a person that can really do it (laughs) right driver show everybody else that you're perfect and you can stop you cannot use the cb you can paddle down to first that this is the way it needs to be done every time that's the representation of a leader that that we need but also the more you put yourself at risk for something, oh, yeah, the more chances is it's going to happen to you because, I mean, we always say nobody wakes up and decides, you know what, I'm going to suck today. <laughs> or, you know what, I'm going to drive off the scale today. Or, you know what, I'm going to have a back. Like, that's not what's in your mind. Nope. But, I mean, I... That's the I, purpose of the videos, Jim. Yep, yeah, exactly. Just to put yeah, that refresher. Yeah, like, wow, that can know, actually happen to yes, me. Maybe I, that's the purpose of the camera going, hey, you need... You know, you're under two seconds following distance. You right. need to be four to five, right? You're under two seconds. Right. So, I mean, that's hopefully those are the things people are realizing that, wow, this is this program is making me better. It's making me safer. It's making JFW better. It's, you know, we're 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 creating a, a uh, an atmosphere, right? Yep. A culture. Yep. For yeah, sure. F- for, for myself. And I've talked about it so much and we have on the podcast, too, and I. I do believe it's it's an age thing, but it just boils down to, for me the videos is it makes you think of the what if right. oh, instead of yeah. visualizing the what if. Here's the what if, you know, if they're if somebody's following you too close and you have to jam on the brakes like in that first video, they might rear end you, right? You know, and then not even your fault, and and it's going to tie up your day, damage your vehicle, all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's kind of unfortunate too, Jim, but we've seen so much of that firsthand. Yeah, you know well, that we've teaches seen our you the what if, right? Parked on a dead body. Yeah. We've seen you know a 16 year old girl that was texting and rear ended us at 50 miles an hour, and they had to scrape her off of the dash of the car and pull it out from underneath the trailer. And you know what I mean? We've mm-hmm. seen the carnage of accidents. We've been at the scene where Flight for Life is taking off, and you deal with some of that, you have a whole nother flipping perspective of what that truck is capable of. Yeah, trailer right? and power lines and 
you know, driver not reporting that he suffers from seizures and, yeah. right. you know, the, the, the pastime of, of things. Yeah. <laughs> so if you think this isn't important, yeah, you're in the wrong line. Yeah. Watch that eight second video too. Cause that guy didn't think it was going to happen to him. Right. Yeah. In eight seconds. Yeah. That's, that's the crazy part. Yeah. Yeah. Distracted for eight yeah, seconds. You never, you never think it's going to happen to you until it does, right? Yeah. Right. But yeah, I do, you know I don't want to be stuck on the age thing, but I think when you're younger, you really just don't think that way. No, you don't. I mean, I know the chances I, I took. We can all sit here at the yeah, table. And, you were in the thrill of the moment, and you were invincible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that too. Yeah. I, I do think we have a lot of people here that that are young that are aware of that. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I really yeah. do. I yeah. think we've helped yeah. them realize yeah. that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Good, like, good like, point, like Jim. phone usage. That would be yes. my first thing that yes. we've showed a young person. Yes. That, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Next on the list, windows down when dumping, backing, and pulling it out of the shop. So this is just another thing that we try to preach. You know, when you're backing up, just roll your windows down, right? Well, why would you want to roll your windows down, right? You're going slow. You could see in your mirrors. Well, you have this sense called your hearing, and sometimes you could just hear something happening, you know, before it gets too bad, you know? I don't know so, why that strikes me funny. You have this sense called hearing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew you would kind of go there, Jam, on, the, on the, another sense, but I was like, okay, the window's down, so you can smell things. Maybe you just got off the highway, and I don't know, you got a pulley freezing up. I don't know. You can smell the steel. or yeah, the, Maybe the, I got a brake hanging up, and I smell brakes. Right, or maybe you got an antifreeze leak that yeah. now you can smell. You know, right, along, right. you know, all the stuff. You were spot on, Jam, about mentioning all that it's stuff. Sensitive. But it's yeah. just a, what can that window help by being down? Everything. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Why do we turn our radios down lower when we're getting close to our destination? Like, you haven't been there before. You're driving you're looking for an address, and you turn your radio down. Mm-hmm. It doesn't help you see one bit. <laughs> well, I mean, Jam, unless our stuff has, our programming has been changed, our radios go mute when you put it in reverse. Okay, what about when you're driving in your personal vehicle and you're looking for an address? Oh, man, I'm I've, jamming stuff as loud as I can. I'm, so, and I'm so looking at my phone. Or even in your big truck. <laughs> you know, I used to do that all the when time. When you're getting close yes. to the pit. It helps right? me concentrate. It, it, it's one less distraction. Yes, you yes. Know? So it's like... <laughs> no, no I, I, you are totally right, Jen, because I do that all the time. Looking for some place, I turn the radio down like it's going to help me. Right. I was just laughing to myself. I even tell Holly, shut up. I can't, I can't see that place. <laughs> Radio's off. Now I can see better. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Those were from uh, Kendrick. So thank you. And yes. also, thank you, you got to have your PPE on in the pits and in the plants. Like it's it's just a non-negotiable. It is. You got to have it on. Yeah. Right. We're trying just, to. Just get in the habit. We're trying to create this look and feel of JFW to some mm-hmm. of our new customers. Yes. And we don't want to be that company like, oh. JFW is like the rest of the people. They don't have their PPE on or they're not doing what they're supposed to do. So please, wear your PPE. Yep. Yep. And we give it to you. It's not like you got to go and buy it. (laughs) Right. You know? Mm -hmm. So throw it on. Yep. All right. Let's talk about nice health care. Brother Dave? Sweet. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Joanne gave us some uh, good statistics here or just information on our utilization. So right now, JFW's current utilization to this very date with NICE is 8.53%, right? So that's like seven people. So <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it, right, when you say it? It's yeah. pretty flipping low. Well, I mean, out of 100, it would be seven people. And I know there's right. 100 and what did you say, 45? What? I think, well, yeah. well, that was, well, 124 was the driver's. Well, every employee is on NICE, whether you right. have insurance so, or not. So it's like 150. Yeah. Yeah, so every not very family. good. Family. I right. mean, if you have four kids, then, you know, you have six people in your family that are on NICE or could right. be yeah. right. on NICE. Now, the representatives from NICE say that's actually not that bad because once you hit 9%, that means NICE is taking hold with your client's population. Sweet. And then once that happens, word of mouth tends to take over, right? So hopefully they're right because 9% doesn't seem like a very good number for me. I've never, I've never like, taken a test and been like, Man, I hope I get a 9% because that means this, I'm absorbing the information. Yeah, this feels like a good segue because, I mean, we we can read this, right? From Yeah, there's two. So there's one on the back and one oh. on the back of here. Okay. On the other one, Dave, yeah, the one feel, on the back. Yeah, because that's what I wanted to. Word of mouth, 
So you got to listen to the podcast, right? That's right. the reason we're talking about it. And then the, here's the word oh, of mouth. Maybe we should do a on. video. Time out, though. So 9% utilization is 9% of the people that have not, or 9% of our people have actually used it. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, 26 employees out of 145 have actually enrolled. Gotcha. So just how to read down one more line. So so the other 120 are just relatively wealthy. Yes, they don't. And can afford I, doctor's <laughs> visits. Yeah, I think the the thing that turned me off, I will I will use it though, and I want to use it, but that soured me a little bit to start with is until I go to use it, I don't want to do the 45 minute right. intake. Right. I right. But when you go to use it, you're going to need it. I right. need to do the 45. And then you're going to be like, I got to do this 45 do minute it? intake. Did you do the 45 no. minute? Oh. <laughs> that's he, not, he that's don't the, need it. He's just, not very nice. <laughs> he's just dogging. Like a specimen of health. <laughs> <laughs> he's just dogging me about it. <laughs> No, yeah, I'm so just saying. It, no, I'm going to be PO'd at myself. Right. Yes, because I'm yeah. going to go to use it and be like pulling my hair out, going, "What do I need this 45 minutes? Yeah, now I need for? 90 minutes. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Because I really want something. So, what's the moral of the story? Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> let's let's do this. Today is oh, November challenge. 20. Oh, okay. Man. Let's let's the four men in this it's room. Not November. I said. Uh, February 21st. <laughs> Did I say November? November 1st. The election. <laughs> let's not done. start winter over again. Let's have this yeah. bet done by November by 1st. The time we, <laughs> by the time we renew. How about by the end of the month, the four men in this room have backed themselves into doing the intake on nice. Okay. The end of the month. That's like nine to eight days. <laughs> yep. Oh, man. You yeah. gave up Facebook. Look at the time you yeah. have. I, well, I don't even use Facebook. YouTube. I've never used oh, that. YouTube. I just got rid of YouTube. Except that one time you tried to pike my dad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny. All right. So, bets on. I love it. Uh, let's see. I hate betting with you. <laughs> I should just buy you a cheeseburger right now. I'm going to lose. Who wants to go ahead and read the uh, testimonials? I'll read it. Great. I'll read what Troy has to say. What about what Amber has to say? You can read it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's a shot. None of us want to read about you, Amber. No. <laughs> I will gladly read it. Uh, yeah, I, c- I could read it too, Jim. Okay. So, I mean, great. we're allowed to say names, right? I mean, that's the purpose of this. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah and, they wrote- and I guess the reason the segue in my eyes was... You know, we're word we're, we're almost to that nine percent where word of mouth is going to start taking off, mm-hmm. and this is exactly what we're talking about doing here. So Troy Holmes wrote us a nice letter, and it, the subject is it, <laughs> no pun intended on the nice letter. I didn't even realize that until oh. just now, but anyway, whatever about <laughs> nice, sweet, sweet. <laughs> so Troy says, my experience with nice healthcare. I was skeptical at first as to what it would be like. He has the HSA option, which has a huge deductible. So I made the appointment. The first appointment must be a 45-minute video chat. I was scheduled with Dr. Keisha. She was on time with the appointment. She listened to my concerns and was very helpful with how labs work, medicine, etc. She ordered a med to get me... Oh, to get me by until labs could be done a week later. The lab setup was easy. They came to my house and did it. Aisha... She was very professional and had a great personality. About two day, days later, the labs were in, and I got another message from NICE to set up another video chat. Keisha explained labs and next steps. So far, my experience with NICE has been wonderful. I will continue to use the service, service and hope it stays with JFW for a long time. Two doctor's appointments plus labs would have easily cost $300 plus and did not cost me a thing as well as my maintenance meds, were also covered. I really like this service. The only drawback is the labs are only done at 9 a.m., 11 a.m., 1 p.m., and 3 p.m. But they did come to his house or his location. doesn't say where, but they did come to him, and, you know, that service is very nice. So, you know, maybe that's something you can... Uh, scheduled to be here at the office by 3 p.m., be to the yard by 3 p.m. one day. And, you know, you can do it. We have a separate office uh, over in the Red Training Center there or, you know, something like that. Just, I mean, we may as well, we're, we're willing to help everyone do that. So in Troy's opinion, uh, he thinks this is a wonderful service. It's saving him money and takes care of things. So thank you, Troy, for sending that in. Hopefully this is the start of the spread of the word of mouth. And, you know, we can move forward with that. So. That, and I, 
Go ahead. No, I was just like, absolutely, Dave. And I was just going to say, I, I, you know, I know we're going to read Amber's, but I do know Amber must have scheduled it because I've seen a nurse come by and met with them, met with her here in the conference room. Yeah. And you can easily do that if you're a driver here if you need right. to like you like you were saying the red shop here yeah. upstairs just just say something so we don't walk in i know in, mikey's in, used it and he loved it because he was uh, i don't have to go anywhere right you know in his particular case they they show up here i mean the one day they did labs they came back like a week later i looked i poked my head in the lunchroom and they were giving the guy an ekg <laughs> you know and i'm like that's freaking and it didn't cost a thing right freeze free man yeah. when they say free health care that's just crazy. I think it's I just mean, fantastic. I mean, it all goes in a, you know, sorry we've been a little bit slow, but for Troy saving 300 bucks, right? I mean, that counts yes. a lot. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. it's a big deal. Yeah. Um, just right quick for Amber's here, just wanted to share my nice appointment experience that I had about three weeks ago. Sweet. I, I, can't, praise, <laughs> uh, I can't praise enough about how easy it was for me to get care and not to mention that it was free. I had to schedule an appointment during the week. I needed to be seen as soon as possible. I had already downloaded the app ahead of time, so all I had to do was log on, go through a handful of pre-questions before setting up my appointment. This only took about 10 minutes to do. Then I was able to go in and select a day and a time that would work for me. They had availability as soon as the next day and had multiple times to choose from. The first, the first appointment, you have to do a 45-minute consult going over your medical history and what my concerns were. Or because, <clears throat> excuse me, because my issue was acute, she skipped all the questions and assessed my concern. That, that's awesome, right? Um, uh, addressed my, assessed my concern first as it was considered a top priority. Once she was done doing that, she finished up asking me medical questions pertaining to my past and present health issues, if any. Once this was done, she was able to get a provider to come to my location, which was here at work the following day. I found this super convenience, convenient as I didn't want to take time off. Um, I didn't want to take off was my concern. So Yeah, time off for my concerns. Yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, the provider came to JFW, took my blood on site, assessed my overall concerns, and was able to write me a prescription and send it over to the pharmacy within a matter of an hour. She communicated through the app, advising me that my prescriptions were available to be picked up, and later that day I got my test results back. She went over the results very thoroughly, addressed my questions that I had that day, what I found what I found that was even better is she made sure I, to follow up with me the next day on, an, on the app to make sure that I was doing okay and my prescriptions were helping with my health concern. The communication with their staff was simply amazing and over the top. I highly recommend using them to your advantage as it is such a time saver, money saver, and they treat you like you matter. I am very happy with the help I received through NICE. Sweet. Amber Carlos. Right? I mean, you can't. Those two testimonies, I hope you're listening to the podcast because this this is a big deal. really is. Yeah. I'm going to get on my 45-minute intake. <laughs> Hopefully, I don't get sick this year. No, yeah, that would be. if I do, I'm going to use NICE. Yeah. That, I mean, that's the purpose of our bet. You know what I mean? If you get right. sick, you can just hop on, right. schedule the appointment. And you don't have to worry about that 45-minute intake because right. it's done. Because you know what a pain in that butt is when oh, yeah. when you need to go through that yeah. process when you're already Ready sick. sick. Yeah. yeah. What if, it's what, miserable. Yeah. What if you can't get your 45-minute intake and an appointment on right. the same day? Right. Yeah. you got to do yeah. that to get to the next one. Yeah. So. Yeah, then you won't like nice. You'd be like, oh, it didn't work. And it's like, yeah. well, you didn't do what you spent. Nice is going to suck. Yeah. yeah. And you didn't feel good. <laughs> Not sweet. <laughs> Uh, speaking of Amber, she did leave me a note. Uh, she asked to make sure we're turning in course paperwork on a daily basis. Why she, is that? Please, she says. Yeah, well, we get paid from our tickets, and so does the driver. If you're not turning your tickets in, two people aren't getting paid on time. That would be you and JFW. As yeah, well that, as that's that's a that's a long time <laughs> talked about thing that you know. No matter what, we pay the driver, right. even though we don't have the ticket mm -hmm. or do all that right we, we shouldn't we shouldn't and yeah. that's just a that's the discussion there of what are we what are we using for the whip and we never do that mm. so yeah 
I'd like to change that. <laughs> Just because to me, it's, like, it's not fair, I really. If I don't do something to earn my pay, I don't expect to be paid. Yep. I mean, yep. same that. thing. Same thing with the safety bonus. We didn't take it. You didn't but earn it. You didn't earn it. Yep. Okay. She also says, as well as making sure to upload tickets in Toro for cores. If they have two tickets, they both need to be uploaded. And if they have one upload, one. Some course drivers have been entering just a bill of lading and not the scale ticket that goes with it. That would be extremely helpful when it comes down to the billing side. Otherwise, drivers are getting the system down and have shown great improvement. Super proud of them all for their hard work. Oh, that's nice, Amber. Yep. Very nice. Going to the safety stuff or the uh no we still got more jr has been a very active participant Mm. so i have one more thing from jr here okay let me pull up i took a picture of it uh just a general message from jr just because we call you or meet with you to give you some coaching on good things and or things you can improve on doesn't mean you're in trouble quite the opposite we proactively coach to save you from making a bigger mistake when we identify some decisions and actions that can lead to a bigger problem. So just trying to nip some things in the butt. I hope everybody really hears that. You know what I mean? Because you're not in trouble. That's like, no. it's coaching. Do we need how, to do you, s- how do you get better? Do we need to say it again for the people in the back? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> It'd be nice if we could say it to the people that weren't listening to the podcast, <laughs> yes. you guys. I mean, yeah. you know. I got a. I don't know if it would get back. Maybe if I see Jason this afternoon, I got because he because he does so much, so many things right. I mean, yeah. he's a he's a great guy. But you know, again, he he could. Help, I mean, he could help Chris if he listened to the podcast, right? You know, I, I think so, Chris is listening. Yeah, I'm sure he is. So. Yep. Chris, uh, tell Jason to listen to the podcast. <laughs> yeah, there you go, Chris. Yeah, give him some shit. So you wanted to skip to the safety stuff? Or did no, 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 no. The more safety stuff, I consider the Mount Vernon oh, emergency okay. truck stop stuff. Just gotcha. more safety notes kind of, Jim. Yep. yep, Brother Dave brought this up yesterday. Um, the Mount Vernon emergency truck ramp. That's going to be the the runaway truck ramp going eastbound uh, at Genesee. That is the last runaway truck ramp going eastbound yep. before you drop down into uh, Morrison and Golden and all that. So. Uh, pretty important ramp right there because if that driver that killed those people would have hit that ramp, he wouldn't be in jail and there'd be people alive today. So yep. yeah, the 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 little note here they are making it more visible. I'm thinking making it more visible, but then I pictured it and it's like yeah, you don't see the thing. Yeah, you do, you expect a truck ramp to be going <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, not, yeah, yeah. All you see is some orange right. barrels, really. Yeah, so, if you were from Colorado, let's say you, know, you were the, from the five by ten flashing caution <laughs> sign over the lane. Where's that at? Before the ramp. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> what, were, what were you going to say, Dave? Super Dave? You wouldn't even recognize it to be a runaway truck ramp, right? You know? No, no. no. Looks think like it would sh- be a gravel shoulder or something. Shoulder, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> something. Huh. Yeah. Uh, interesting. There are five ramps in the I seventy corridor in Colorado. But even more interesting, these ramps that we have here in Colorado are the most used ramps in the state, right? In the nation, in the nation, in yeah. the nation, right? Uh, Technically, in the state, <laughs> in the state, and in the nation, right? Yeah. Two records there. They get used up to one time per week in the summer months. I guess that's uh, more likely to have some brakes get hot. And then uh, the Mount Vernon ramp has been closed while under construction. So if you got a problem over there right now. You got big problems because there is no ramp because right. they got to close it. They're making it more visible and robust. Sounds like our insurance programs. <laughs> nice. <laughs> there will be more improved advanced <laughs> signage, increased sight distance, larger barriers between the ramp and the embankment, giving drivers more confidence to actually use it, and also better vision and improved design, allowing late entry if you miss a first entrance. Yeah, mm, so. that's good. So I, I hope it becomes a Cadillac of ramps. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I want to be your Definitely Cadillac. Definitely an inside joke yeah. there. That's a rough yes. one. I, kn- I knew you guys. Would so, get- so is there two on Eisenhower? Yes. Westbound. Wow. I can't picture the second one. I can only picture the one. I mean, two on Vail for sure, but I can't picture two, the two four. on Eisenhower. Well, that would be five. Two on- I think there's only right. one on Vail. No, there's two on Vail. 
Yeah, at the top in the middle. I can only picture the one on Eisenhower. I'm trying to figure out the fifth one. I'd have to double check, but I only remember one on Vail. And the statistic I would love to know, too, about that it gets used more in the summer or happens more in the summer the and I don't know maybe it was all of us talking or something the state patrol said but most truckers are afraid to use I-70 during the winter because of the snow so they go they 80 go around. Yeah. yeah they go around when and, I, it, and I think that leads to that it was, I, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Jinx. Jinx, <one> <laughs> yeah Jim it was funny because there's a video on the CMCA website on that uh, uh, notification and I watched the video and they just bring up that they're busier in the summertime and it's heat related. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I'm like, no, that's BS. Right. There's twice the amount of trucks in the summer because right. they don't need chains. They're not afraid yep. of the weather, right. not yep. afraid of the snow. I mean, how many trucking companies, they're like, it's snowing in Colorado. Take 80 or 40. Yeah. When, I mean, that's just a rule at some mm-hmm. companies. When I was, What I was going to say is when I drove for Stevens Transport, you weren't allowed to go over I seventy. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So, yeah, we we pick up chains at a chain bank, so we went met the requirements if we got pulled over, and then you got to another state and you'd have to drop those suckers off. But we were not allowed. <laughs> oh, wow. to, we were not allowed to use the I seventy corridor. So, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Was that year round, Jim? Now that I think about it, it was year round because ah, okay. we didn't have Jake breaks either. Oh, but we hit grapevine. We'd hit cabbage. Like we hit all these other hills. But, so yeah, yeah mm-hmm. what's what's mm-hmm. the difference basically? Yep. Yeah. Uh, the other note here for construction is Highway 285 and Colorado Nine. Where's that at? That would be fair play. Uh, they are doing intersection improvements and a bridge replacement. Uh, the project consists of making the intersection improvements on Highway 285 and Colorado Highway Nine, and replacing a bridge on US 285 in the town of Fair Play and Park County. Work includes roadway widening and reconstruction to accommodate additional through lanes and acceleration, deceleration lanes, install installation of new traffic lights, and a ADA ramp work in both Fair Play and Alma. Uh, ADA, I believe, is the American Disabilities Act ramp, so it's a pedestrian bridge that will be handicap accessible. Other work includes storm sewer and drainage improvements, sidewalk curb and gutter replacement, and repair, repairs to an existing pedestrian bridge. Um, benefits, widen the intersection to six lanes to support year-round traffic along the US-285 corridor. Uh, signalize the US-285 Colorado 9 intersection to improve traffic flow and replace a bridge to meet today's standards of durability and structural integrity. Uh, like I said, they're going to install the uh, ADA ramps and fair play in Alma to enhance accessibility for all pedestrians. So that's that's good stuff. And there, yeah. right there, though, that's the <clears throat> oh, it sucks. It, <laughs> yeah, it does. And, right and, now, and we can't. I mean, because that's our pit. You know, a, as such, we have to be on top of our toes through this construction area. Yep. I mean, we can't be speeding. We have to be, we represent the town of Fair Play yeah. because we're there all the time. So it's even more important that we're doing it right up through there. I agree. Sound, but it sounds like it's going to be awesome when it's done compared to the way it is now. Yeah. Don't forget, that's where uh, that, that there was an accident up there, kind of right where we're talking about. And uh, a driver hit another car and ended up going head on into one of our park vehicles. Well, not head on, but rear on. It like spun out. Yeah. And it was like just yeah. yeah. And they they thought that guy had died, but mm-hmm. later he was alive. It was kind of weird. But yep. Be careful up there. Yeah, yeah there is just flat out a lot of traffic on two eighty five. Oh yeah, I mean, Dave, you're right. Heavy. Unbelievable amount of cars. Yeah. yeah. Especially in the summertime. Dave, we're both right. There's two on uh I'll call it out of Eisenhower and there's two on Bail. Hmm. So the there's upper veil and lower veil which they're four miles apart at mile post 182 and 186 then coming out of the tunnels there's at 209 lower straight creek and then 212 upper straight creek and then eastbound mount vernon and then the other one i totally forgot about was drop it into steamboat mm. but clearly not the i-70 corridor right mm-hmm. so and i'm sure there's a handful on wolf creek i think there's a couple on wolf creek if i'm not mistaken or at least one you know, makes me the because I, I do know the ones were Vail because I knew the because to me the one up on the top isn't very far and you shouldn't have lost control. So I always thought that was kind of a weird right. place. 
But when you talk about coming out of the tunnels, I can't place that other one like you're saying, Dave. I can't picture it, Jim. I can just I mean, picture just, the great big long one that goes all the way up the hill. Right. And, you know, I'm <laughs> Google. Oh, back in my day when I used to truck, I don't even know where all both the ramps are. <laughs> you know, how does that sound? I can't. You know, can't they did place go over it. rule of thumb in that video, too. It's kind of a silly video, but they really uh, try and educate you a little bit and say, you know, be sure to go down the hill the same gear you came up the hill, Mm -hmm. you know? And I I think that's... Or one gear lower. Exactly. I wish two gears lower. Exactly. But with the technology and the power of the engine brakes now, it's, it, you can do it in the same, but yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys, anything, got anything else for the discussion before I move on to questions from the audience? I I think we covered it. Okay. Jimmy V has a great question. He says, oh, where'd I go? Here it is. When dispatch sends a start time, does that start time mean A, be at the yard at that time, B, leave the yard at that time, or C, be at the pit at that time? And then he says, asking for a friend. So <laughs> it, it, it really is a great question, but I would, I would have to look at it as if there's a, our normal time the rest of the year, start time 5 a.m. 5 a.m. So are you at the pit at five or are you here at five? I mean, our normal thing that's nine months out of the year, let's say. Here at five. Here at five. Start times means be at the yard at that time. Exactly. So start time of six, you're here at six, not hitting the pit till seven. And that could be a, you know, a light, you know, light outside, temperature this time of year, all those kind of things that we're trying to control. Maybe the job doesn't go till eight or nine. Maybe the pit doesn't want you up there before that. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, great question to go over, you know, which should be, I'm going to say common knowledge, but it, it gets confusing, you know, it does all year long. We do a 5 a.m. Start and then, well, and then we got like six and then the rock trailers and then the, the bulkers and then we're doing some coors, coors and yeah. yeah, all that kind of stuff. But so, I'm trying to put myself in a driver's position right now, right? We have a 7 a.m. start time. Well, let's just say 6. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to leave at 5. I know it's 6, but I'm going to leave at 5. I just can't picture myself treating my coworkers that way. It's not right. It's not fair to them either. Right? Why? If, What's it doing to them? Well, they got to wait to make money. Why do you think you're a special where you get to leave early and go get that first load exactly. before anybody else? It's disrespectful. And it's selfish. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I mean, somebody's got to be first and somebody's got to be last, but that's together. Right. You go and do that yeah. together. And the way it falls is the way it falls. Yeah. You know, and it, and, and I, I've always, you know, when we're busy in the summer, I cheer the person that gets out and gets to hustling. Right. So much work for everybody. We got so much to get done. That's awesome. But like what you're saying right now, Jam, it, it, it just doesn't work that way. We have to, we have to go back to working really as a team. It's kind of like when you sit down to dinner with people and there's one person that started before everybody else. (laughs) Yeah, we've, as a family, we've started to cheer more, you know, with drinks, cheer, you know. Uh And maybe that's because, well, obviously my kids are old enough to drink, (laughs) something you used to never do. So we like to cheer as a family, but there's always one of us that takes a drink first. And we're like, no, 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 we're waiting to cheer. We're waiting to cheer. What are you doing? You know, like it ruined the drink. (laughs) In my house, if you take a bite of your plate first, you're the one that kicks off the prayer. Ah, That's a good one. That's a good one like that. Yep. Yep. Sometimes we're excited about praying. (laughs) Taking that bite, (laughs) right? Absolutely. Uh, Let's see. Safety topic of the audience. Uh, (laughs) Safety topic of the week. (laughs) It it is of the audience here. (laughs) (laughs) Is distracted driving and hiding your phone from the camera system. So if you're this person that's deciding to put your camera in a place where our Samsara camera won't pick you up using your phone, you are not tricking anybody but yourself. You are putting yourself at risk for having an accident, being distracted driving. I don't know if you noticed around here, but if you get into an accident because you were on your phone, that is pretty much your last day at JFW. Yeah. So don't be that person. Yeah, I would. I, I, and I'm, doesn't it drive your odds up? Oh, my God. That, that's what I was. You know doing. what I mean? At least if the camera is right there that's or the, 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 I'm sorry, the phone is right there in the camera's vision you're at least looking out into traffic right. with your peripheral. And I, I'm yeah. not condoning it. I'm just right. saying Aim that's how steering. much 
dumber it is to hide yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was going to say, Dave. Not that I agree with it, but I would rather see you with your phone up in your face right. than you, down here. Using yes, it, right? holding it up. Yeah, just like you just horizon. said, Dave. That's what I was well, going to say. Some yeah. of the drivers are putting it up where the camera won't catch it either. Uh, if you put it high up on your windshield by the camera, wow. the camera won't pick your hand up on the camera, wow. on the phone. So. Yeah, there's people figure this stuff out. You know? Distracted is distracted. It doesn't matter where it's at. But you are making the statement like, I will do anything to be able to be distracted yeah. driving. That That is in legislation right now. They are, that's going through. Not, I Colorado. I don't know if it'll, Colorado. Know if it'll go through. Yeah, it's, it's, they're working to make it a bill. Mm-hmm. So versus what we have now, because I know Polis, he made it where a cop can't just pull you over for distracted driving. He's got to prove that you were careless before. Yes. Yeah. They're trying to pass something. You can't even be on the phone at an intersection. Uh, that's what New York does. And, yeah, right. They'll slap you in the face for that. Yep. Some states um, prohibit any cell phone use. I know Connecticut does. Yeah. In any car. It doesn't matter. Right now, it's a commercial vehicle versus a personal vehicle in Colorado. Right. But, um, yeah, you don't hands-free anything. You cannot be on the phone in Connecticut. If you are that person hiding your phone, again, I challenge you, watch that video, eight seconds, one fatal distraction. Right. And if you still feel like you could do it, then I, I guess you win. Not not, uh, not our culture, though, Jim. Yeah, shouldn't not, be. Not, not trying to be the best. Nope. I mean, it's just not... Not that teammate. I didn't watch that jam. When did you send it out? I want to go back and find it. You sent it out. <laughs> no, yeah. I think I think was you it, were gone. Was I babe. on vacation? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, you could just YouTube it, but I'll send you the link. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll I want to watch that. Yeah, it's it's ten minutes, but it's worth the watch. <laughs> <laughs> ten minutes for an eight second video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Right to eight seconds, and it takes ten minutes to get there. Well, somehow the math is end up. Those, re- <laughs> those eight seconds has affected years. So I can just and lifetimes of people's lives. Fast oh. forward to the last. Eight seconds in the video? <laughs> no, I just, it's I just it, the first it. eight seconds will get you, Dave. Because <laughs> yep. oh, when you crash the in, the, in the first eight seconds, oh, and then the rest like, of it's oh my god, like following up. It's yeah. a story. I mean, it's yeah, destruction it's a, of life. Telling yeah. the story. I mean, the driver's the, in prison. He doesn't get to see his family <laughs> grow up. I mean, all of yeah. that. The story is the driver's perspective. He killed the guy because he was distracted driving, yeah. mm. and then it's his story from jail. Yeah, so mm. it's very impactful. So. I watched a Dateline like that the other day. Maybe it was him. What's the guy's name? No, he just oh. killed his wife, and now he's in jail. <laughs> <laughs> kind of not the same thing. <laughs> he he well, might have been. Didn't this, do it. He yeah. might have been. Was, right? distra- yeah, this guy wasn't distracted. <laughs> I think he aimed to kill his wife. Yeah. It's always the spouse. <laughs> but you said he didn't do it? Oh, yeah. He, no, he didn't. He didn't <laughs> oh, they're all innocent. Um, when you're in jail, that's that's... Where all the innocence is. Yep. We should raise children in jail because there's nobody guilty there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'd love to agree with you, Dave, but when they go through and they, they let these guys out that have been in prison for 30, 40 years on DNA that they didn't really do it, I'm just like, how do you how do you get your life back? Right. And yeah. I know that's... I, you don't, the, the The odds are so small. In a, you, you don't. But I just think, oh, my... I mean, it, it, it just bothers me. Well... They do get a pretty good paycheck when they get out. I mean, the daily wage isn't very good, but when you've been in jail for 40 years <laughs> and you haven't spent a dime of that 125 bucks a day, yeah, <laughs> you go going to Disneyland. Your, yeah, your life is gone. Yeah. yeah. There's no getting it. But back. what led you to be, what things were you doing that you were in that situation that they picked you up in the first place? Right. That's what, you know, just watched a thing on. Um, and what if somebody just picked you out of a lineup and you weren't even there, but, yeah. oh, that's the guy. Yeah. That happened. Yeah. The yeah. clip on Denzel Washington, and he was like, it starts at home. You know, that's where the education and the and the parenting and all that kind of stuff and how to, how to help our youth, it starts at home. Yeah. You either raise your kid or the world will. Yep. You know? Yep. So, Boy, sure. that's true, Jim. Yeah. All right. Tips and tricks from Ray Davis. Ray Davis is back in the game. It's a short one today, but he explains why. Uh, checking your mirrors. You should be checking your mirrors every five to eight seconds. And before you change lanes, turn or merge. Check your mirrors quickly and return your attention to the road ahead. Frequent scanning will allow you to be aware of changing traffic conditions around your truck. 
I just want to apologize to the JFW family, friends, and listeners. I have been so caught up in this move. All my free time has been to unpacking and building new furniture and whatnot to start this new journey. Hope all is well with the JFW family, friends, and listeners. Remember, safety has no blind spot. Look and lean. Sit up in your stool. Don't be a fool. Much love and respect always. Ray Ray 0013. Nice. Man, if he's got IKEA furniture, I can see where he doesn't I'm have telling time. You. Yeah. I didn't know he was a furniture builder. <laughs> Just Glad going he... there and shopping is an adventure. <laughs> never, it's like never a camping been. trip. Never yeah, been there. That's yeah. true. He yeah. probably bought it at IKEA. Yeah. Jim, but, if you ever go there, here's the best tip in the world. I heard they got food there. I'll just go eat. Well, they do have food, yeah. You have to go find it, right? Uh, it's just not, like, available. You have to go to that area. But okay. It's designed, like, once you go in, you have if to you go all the way If you want to watch a football game, you have to go to the football stadium. <laughs> you just need to find that. There's an exit. You just need to find it, like, behind some curtains, mm-hmm. like, walk through an area. You can get the hell out of there. I mean, I finally was like, I give up. You've, you've beaten oh, yeah. me. Yeah, and oh, heaven yeah. forbid you want to go back to buy something because right? you decided, oh, okay. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's there, It's a trick there. <laughs> is it like one-way lanes? Or? Uh-huh. It is, really? yeah. You go in, you have to shop the whole place. And I'm like, no, I'll BS. Uh-uh. I'm really? going to do it. Yep. Wow. <laughs> I got the one thing I needed, and it's time to go. Huh. Imagine yeah. trying to go the other way up a cattle chute, and that's what it's like. <laughs> really? Are people mooing while they're in there? <laughs> You guys are hilarious. <laughs> you just turn around and go the other way. It's brutal. <laughs> it's not. Or it you brutal. cut through the shortcut. It's, Jim, what kind of shopping carts they got over there? <laughs> they got really nice ones because the wheels spin. Uh, They're the swirly ones. So the swirly car, ones? Yeah, the, so the cart will go vertically or... Nice. Uh, Horizontal. Yeah. It yeah. just they're well, badass just, carts. It's kind of like need, a stretcher. You so need, you really don't have an excuse to push them back because they, they go so well, easy. Well, you don't even get a cart until checkout, right? No, you can. You because I thought everything you bought there, you just pulled a tag and then they go pull it or wrote it down. The or, big stuff, but if you're getting individual stuff, you know, nah, like what do I know? I was there once. <laughs> that was enough. What'd you get to eat? That's what I would have known. I don't remember. Huh. It was a rough visit for Swedish, me. Swedish Swedish meatballs. Nice. Not a shopper. Very nice. The thing is, it's a it's a money saver for the family. You can go there and feed like eight people for I don't know, making it up twenty bucks. It's, really, it is really reasonable. Wow, where are you guys going to dinner? IKEA. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting for Stuckies to open up. I hear they got the best food in town. Bucky's, Bucky's, Stuckies, 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 Stuckies is old school. Stuckies is down like Florida and Georgia and yep. all the southern states. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think funny. there was a Stuckies across from uh, where do you get the the big O cinnamon rolls? There used to oh, be a Johnson's Stuckies Corner. That, Johnson's that, Corner. Yeah, yeah, there Johnson. was one up there, yeah. A long time ago, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Johnson's yeah, we Corner would probably fold with Bucky's up there. Uh, we used to drive from New York to Florida. That was like our, our trip. That's and, a thing, right? Yeah. Like, don't yeah. you go to Florida for vacation? I mean, there? the station wagon, the whole thing, you know what I mean? And we would stop at all the Stuckies. <laughs> oh, wow. Every <laughs> single one of them. Yeah. Stuckies. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like good memories, Jim. Yeah, no doubt. Cool. Soup. You want to save us here and hit us with that high road hauling? <laughs> I like my soup uh, hot, not cool. Yeah. <laughs> so this week's high road hauling is all about Ikea. Sweet. <laughs> nice. <laughs> How to, to shop <laughs> Ikea and not get frustrated. Um, actually, it's about following your path. Um, you know, young kids and, and young adults alike, they, they wonder what their calling is or they don't have a, a, a direction in life their passion or a passion right you know it it might sound scary to have no life blueprint you can follow but I think what is scarier is to live someone else's life rather than your own um, we've probably all had a parent uh, telling us what we should do and what their expectations are um, we are encouraged to follow our dreams but not all dreams are created equal Sometimes living the life we want means making choices that go against expectations of others. So taking the road less traveled has many advantages, and here are seven. Number one, you have less fear of failure. While nothing in life is risk-free, but some paths have clearer roadmaps than others. Carving a new path tends to involve a lot of trial and error, which can also mean greater potential for failure. But experiencing failure more often can help us change our relationship to it and come, into, and come to view it as a learning opportunity rather than judgment on our abilities. This growth mindset can, in turn, make success more likely. Number two, thicker skin. 
Facing judgment and disapproval from our choices can be painful, but over time it becomes clear that others' judgment often has more to do with their own fears and their insecurities than with our very own shortcomings. They might feel betrayed, confused, or even envious. Seeing things from this angle can help us take hurtful comments less personally and increase our own empathy. Number three, you learn to understand other people's outlooks. Those who have gone against the grain recognize there is no one-size-fits-all approach to happiness, and there are many ways to lead a fulfilling life. Number four, you gain unexpected community. Taking a different path than the majority of one's peers can be lonely at times, but it can also open up new possibilities for connection with others outside of your social circle. And you also have more freedom to be who you are. When we find ourselves living lives that don't align with who we are, we suffer psychologically. Research suggests that authentic self-expression is a vital component of well-being, even when it sets us apart from others. We're even better off losing some friends if it means we can be truer to ourselves. And you decide what is meaningful for you. There's no shortage of, of opinions about what it takes to make life meaningful. Some argue that life doesn't have meaning until one gets married or one has kids, while others place a higher value on professional success. But meaning is a deeply personal, subjective experience. Researchers suggest that the types of experiences that give us a sense of meaning, like kindness or overcoming adversity, are not constrained by culturally defined milestones. And number seven, last uh, thing, you become an inspiration for others. When we undertake a life path other than the one prescribed by our, by our parents or culture, we help make those paths more acceptable for others. Just because something has never been done before doesn't mean it cannot be done at all. There's no shame in following a well-traveled path. But if you're looking for something more, there are plenty of other roads to, to explore and plenty of good reasons to embark on them. And the quote this week, if you can see your path laid out for in front of you step by step, then it's not your path. Your own path you make with every step you take. And that is why it's your path. And that was spoken by Joseph Campbell, who is an American author. Um, interesting thing about Joseph Campbell um, he wrote a book, and I don't remember the name of it, but it, uh, gosh, it was um, A Thousand Heroes or something like that. And it was one of the books that George Lucas based Star Wars on. Oh, wow. Ba oh, wow. Yeah, based um, Luke Skywalker on. Oh, really? Yeah, I was like, oh, who is this Joseph Campbell dude? And now I want to read the book. Yeah, that's interesting, Dave. Mm -hmm. That was a great one, Dave. Awesome. I enjoyed, I enjoyed it. Makes me a little angry, though. Oh, wait, that's next week. <laughs> the next week is on anger. Yeah. <laughs> Final thoughts, everybody? I, <clears throat> I have a weird one for you guys. Great. I'm going to put all three of you on the spot. Love it. I have, I have three questions for you, and I'll ask all three of you at the same time. So if there was a nuclear bomb heading at us, mm -hmm. and you had the choice to choose one state versus all of the United States. For it to hit? For it to hit. California. <laughs> <laughs> what state would you choose? California. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's no right or wrong. I'm just it's a it's a bizarre question, I know. I mean you lose all of the United States or one state? That's an unrealistic question, Dave. You can't answer that question. <laughs> I can. With confidence, <laughs> I think I think if I if I was going to do the what if, just thinking about it, and that would be that choice. I'd try to pick the least amount of damage, so I would pick the smallest state or the least populous. Right, right. That, that's that's where I would jump to, and like I don't Alaska because it's farthest away and it has very few people. <laughs> yeah, but it's the biggest, has so many reserves. Yeah, I mean you'd have I mean, to. There's, there's a lot of enrichment up yeah, there. Is, but, is, so, not, is the, not like Rhode Island yeah, the smallest? That's or the I, smallest. But if, there, good if one landed there. in Rhode but Island, but it would get New York. It would get yeah, and it's I mean, it's heavily Washington, populated, right? No, I mean, it's one state. 
Yeah, but it's the size of Denver. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying it's one state. A nuclear bomb would okay, be. Okay, so we'll skip well, it. Dave well, can't no, answer this. No, no, no. 100 square Let's miles. Dave what's, can't answer this. What's your answer? I, I'm asking questions. I'm not answering. <laughs> <laughs> Convenient. Okay, so I got two out of three answers. Dave won't answer this one either, probably. So <laughs> if you guys won a million dollars in the lotto, but you couldn't keep it and had to give it to one person, who would you give it to? Uh one. Jared Polis. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Dave can just leave now. He, 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 <laughs> Dave now. he takes all the rest of our he money. He is not playing in my game at all. Uh, at all. Who would you give a million dollars to if you if you won it and you couldn't keep it? My wife. <laughs> and I, Right, Dave? I, I, yeah. I was going to spit that out, and I know you're not asking that, Dave. I think any person in my family, because I know they'd share. Mm-hmm. And it, and that would be you, Janet, Sam. I mean, that would, but that's not answering your question. It is. I mean, I, it is. I mean, I never have to. Right. Worry if you about gave that. it to Holly, she would spread it with the whole family. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. are you asking for outside the family then? Anything. Who yeah. would you give it to? I mean, there's, obviously, there's... inside the family, we got to take our care of our own family, right? right. But outside right. the family, I don't know. I'd have to think about that. I want to give it to somebody that would be smart with it and do some good things with it for sure. You okay. Know? Good answer. I'm just assuming Dave's not going to answer yeah, this. He, he's not playing. I just said my wife. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. That's All right. so cliche. Uh, last one. Again, bizarre, bizarre question. But if there was a civil war tomorrow, what do you bring to the table? <laughs> what don't I bring to the table? <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, is there a lot of stuff on that, Jam? Is Bongs and dildos. <laughs> <laughs> Bongs and dildos. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh man what was rob white's yesterday oh uh, man helicopters and something it was yeah you know, yeah it wasn't it was funny though it was yeah yeah he did say dicks and helicopters <laughs> <laughs> thanks thanks for putting that on air Dave. <laughs> well we got bongs and dildos okay. we've already went there <laughs> uh. Oh man, is that are these our closing thoughts? <laughs> uh, kind of to a degree. I mean, right? I have one little comment afterwards, and it's nothing to do with the questions or the answers. <laughs> oh, wow. It's not. It's just like food for thought. If there's a civil war tomorrow, what what do you bring to the table? Yeah, yeah. I mac and cheese. <laughs> Depends on yeah, what as, side as, you choose, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> what do you bring to the table? In, what do you have to offer in a silver war? Civil war. Yeah. How much? Sixty-three years old, <laughs> Dave. You haven't played in one of these. Yeah, I mean, serious answer. I would say firepower and medical. You know, I could kill people and hunting I could, ability, and I could save people. Hunting, yeah. absolutely right. Yeah. You can I mean, feed. You can kill. You can save. Save. You yeah. can a lot of things to bring to the table. Yeah. 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 I would have to say, you know, because I've watched all the TikToks and all that <laughs> stuff, you know, conversation with Jam, you see all the different stuff, your, your preparedness, but I would hope I could bring my humanity to it that would try to end it. Oh, that would be wow. my Good answer, Jim. Huh. Yep. I like that. That's the high road right there. Yep. I'm ready to mow shit down. <laughs> He's over there trying to stop the war. <laughs> hey, not that I'm going to count on you, dude, because if somebody tries to kill me, I'm going, where's Jam? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> can, he, can he stop that bleed right. or what? Can't we all just get along? <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. That's it's what I mean. It's a civil war. You're going to die. You know, Shoot or be shot. You know, well, I do the shit that has to be done, I will. But I would hope that. I mean, know. I know Jim brings a lot of skills just in a lot of Both of you guys, like. You'll figure out. You'll be able to get off the island. You'll be able to figure shit out. So, yeah. might survive in a different way. Everybody yeah. would survive in a different. You, way. You would now. bring value. You know, sure. Like, sure. Yeah, that's what so, I was. I something was. needs to be rigged. Where's Jim and Dave at? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what I was trying to think because the my my get it done part of me. You know, I think I could get it done with getting off the island. But yeah. I yeah. I would hope hope that truly there's a part of that humanity that we could end it somehow. Yeah, I guess. Well, I think that would come after a lot of civil war. Yeah, Dave, that's not that's the end part, but that needs to be the goal from the beginning. Of course, somehow, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and that's the. I mean, that's the easy answer. That doesn't solve the civil war. Yeah, and then I guess just kind of my lo- closing comments is, you know, do you put America? F- and this isn't a question. This is just closing comments. Do you put America first? And I, I guess 
where I'm kind of going by that is there's a new series on Apple TV, uh, and it's called uh, Masters of the Air. It's a Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg done series, and it is totally based on true events, things that happened, and it was, uh, you know, the war, and basically America got involved late in World War II, and, you know, we didn't get involved until after Pearl Harbor. And uh, when when our pilots got sent over to England and Europe to fight the Nazis over there, the danger of those missions that those guys are flying the B-17, the Flying Fortresses, and uh, the heavy bombing units that they were in, I mean, like, 29 bombers would take off and 11 would come home or 13 would come home. And those were those were 11 men crews that were on those planes. You had a left gunner, a right gunner, a tail gunner, pilot, uh, navigator, bombardier. Wow. You know what I mean? You, you had... And, these guys were flying in squadrons, and they're flying through the the flak in the air, and they're just like planes are just going down. And then that had nothing on top of being attacked by the the German uh, fighter planes, and just the heroism of those men and women. And the thing is, their age mm. they put patriotism Kids. and their land and their love for their families and freedom before their lives. And it just, I can't stop watching the show. It just, it's its grabbed me and wow. I, I see it and they're doing such a good job. And of course it's a drama, right. right? I mean, they're involving the people, but these are true events, you know, and you, you see that and you realize what they've went through. And, you know, where we're at in this country today is, it's tough to see and swallow. I, I feel sorry for the veterans that are still around that fought for our right for some of the people to be who we are right. you know and i know i could be better right i could be more patriotic or, or whatnot but you know so many of these people that are that are wanting to change this or that or you know some of the other things like like the agendas. <laughs> i wasn't going there jam but what did we fight for you know i guess right. we did fight for our freedom and maybe i need to look at it different and i don't know we Just, did. We did fight for the freedom for them to have the right to change their gender, whether we agree with it or not. But those people that are asking to change their gender, would they step up and fight? Mm-hmm. That's what bothers me about the whole thing, Dave. Right. Is would they? Could, do they feel be. the same way about America that blessed them with the right to change their gender? <clears throat> yeah. Good point. <clears throat> So anyway, that's, where, that's, that's my yeah. closing thoughts. You know, I was so thinking about this I'm, early I'm on, you guys. Appreciative of the United States of America. Yeah. You know? I'm not very good at, like, remembering lines from a movie or remembering lyrics from a song. But you know what? I can say the Pledge of Allegiance, like, in my sleep. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's what being an American is part of. You know, we are so lucky to be in this country and... I don't know. It's just it just it hit me when we were saying it, uh, you know, this morning. I was like, "Wow, I sure know that. I can say it backwards." You know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, that's that's I'm proud of that. Yeah. Every time I say it, I I just it it takes me back to school. It takes me someplace. Yeah, memory. Yeah, it's, it's a and it's a it's a pride, Dave. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely, absolutely. You know, maybe I've told it on the podcast, Dave, and I know you've heard that story, but. Whenever and and I and I told you I wanted to watch that. We talked about it a while ago, and you started watching that. That I I said that's coming out. But you know, years ago, and when, when I was in the truck listening to the radio, there was the Peter Boyle show, and he talked, um, told a story because he was really into aircraft. Or one of the guys on his on his show was into aircraft, and they went to a aircraft show that was here in Colorado where they bring in all the, you know, World War II planes and all the different stuff. And he said he was at one of the deals and I, I, I probably messed up with the plane, but I, I think it was a bomber where it had the gun turrets, mm-hmm. you know, underneath the old ones. And he said he was in a group of people and an older gentleman, because I'm talking this is 30 years ago or 40 years ago, a gentleman walked up and he just put his hand on the plane and started to weep. And... The somebody was, you know, talked in the crowd, hey, are you okay, whatever. Anyway, he could overhear the story that this was the, the plane that he had to, when they landed, he had to wash his best friend's blood and guts 
out of the bottom of this plane and they restored it and you know he was he wasn't expecting yeah. he's going there to go hey i'm you know I'll celebrate and see a plane and what i used to yeah. fly and show my family and it's the exact plane that he flew in and i mean i, I remember that story it's just one of those that just like you're talking this this is that surreal dave yes, the, yes. Because you talk, look what that guy did. Yes. And whatever, thirty years later, forty years later, the, and he, I bet he'd climb in that plane and do it all over. Oh, hands down. Right. Hands down. Heroes. Right. Yeah, heroes. They're heroes. In, in, They're a hero without ever being asked. Yeah. Volunteered. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So my, I mean, uh, kind of along those lines, but we we talk about. I don't know. We 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 offer so much help in the in the world and we try to be there and then and then some days, you know, you just have to you just have to do it and I think and and, and it, it's funny you talk about the heroes, but I I ran across this deal or you know, I always say that I run across something I enjoy here, but every morning when a person wakes up, life gives them a backpack and in that backpack are bricks. Every one of those bricks is a form of pain. That person is to carry for that day. Those bricks can be physical pain, emotional pain. It can be a spiritual pain. It can be a pain over work. But no matter what, they have to put their backpack on and they have to climb to the top of the proverbial mountain. Whatever their responsibilities are for that day, you got to take care of those responsibilities. If there are a lot of bricks in your backpack, it may take you a long ass time to get to the top of that mountain. You may be coming home after everyone else is asleep and you're still up taking care of the shit that has to be done. You're the last person standing. But at the end of the day, a person who is worth their salt, a person who is to be respected and emulated, is a person that puts on their backpack and carries the bricks to the top of the fucking mountain no matter what without a complaint without feeling the victim, without feeling sorry for themselves. And that's the person that takes care of their bricks. And that's what it means to make a difference every day. I love that. So, that's good. Just, will you email me that? Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, absolutely. I, I do have to say, I, I, I will email it to you, Jam, but it's the conversation we've had. It was men or a man, and I changed it to them and there and we. <laughs> So just when you see it, you'll it's you'll okay. laugh. It's okay. Yeah, I still want it. <laughs> oh, there's nothing wrong with that. So. <clears throat> uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the Channel 23 podcast. Hit that follow button. Also, don't forget to go back and listen to the episode 72 to help find Amber's mom. Links to her story will be in the notes of today's podcast. Let's say the creed and get on out. Hey, just, All right. Oh. Just I just want to say right quick, and yeah, let's get let's get to the creed there and stuff. But thank you guys, I appreciate it. I think this was a great podcast. I yeah. Mean, and, and you know, the one last week, I think sometimes it's hard for all of us to get up and carry the same message because we do the same thing every day. Right. So I just want to tell all three of you, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate, appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. Appreciate you as well. So together we face, face and overcome, overcome all that stands, stands before us. us. Together we are accident free. Together we joyfully create honest value for those we serve. Together we celebrate our differences and respect those with whom we work. Together we are accountable for our words and our actions. And together we are the JFW family. Woo! Have a great week, everybody. I see those big, bright, shiny red trucks just a trucking down the road. Those big, bright, shiny red trucks just a looking for another load. Well, it's a family tradition, any Rocky Mountain day. Our fathers before us showed us the way. We work for asphalt cowboys and concrete kings. But that's never been a problem, cause we got diesel in our veins. We've got diesel in our veins. I see those big, bright, shiny red trucks, just a trucking down the road. Those big, bright, shiny red trucks, just looking for another load. 
And there's a couple million tons to move I see them everywhere So you best get out their way And watch that sand and gravel disappear There's another run to make We gotta get it there on time And we got what it takes To lay it all out on the line Big bright shiny red trucks just a trucking down the road. Those big bright shiny red trucks just looking for another load. Those big bright shiny red trucks got the best drivers in town. They got all the tools they need to keep that hammer down. When they hit them scales, they won't need to dodge them, won't need to duck them. They just keep that hammer down And they keep that diesel truck in Keep that hammer down And keep that diesel truck in I see those big bright shiny red trucks Just a truckin' down the road Those big bright shiny red trucks Just a lookin' for another Keep them doors a closed, keep them butts in their seats Cause those customers are calling, and those red trucks can't be beat They gotta put the hammer down, and pick up another load Get it off the ground, keep them eyes open and on the road Keep them eyes open on the road Big bright shiny red trucks just a trucking down the road. Those big bright shiny red trucks just looking for another load. Breaker, breaker, two, three. Anybody got a copy on that channel 23 podcast? Welcome and thanks for listening.